All right, I'm gonna have you introduce yourself for me real quick. Hello, my name is Ross Marquand and I play Aaron on The Walking Dead. All right, Ross, um, you mentioned to me that you have done voicing in some video games. Uh, what are some that you have really enjoyed doing? Well, I think for me, Battlefield Hardline was like the best one I've ever worked on, but I'm actually working on one right now uh, that involves mocap, and uh, I can't say what the project is because it's very secretive and very much under wraps, <laughs> but it is, I think it's going to be probably the best best new video game coming out in the next year or two, so Ooh. it's very, very, very exciting stuff. Yeah. Very secretive? Very how secretive. Hard is, how hard, blah, I can talk today. <laughs> how hard is it to to kind of keep that under the wraps? It's, you, you're not, really excited. it's not hard when you think about how badly they could sue you if you say anything. <laughs> so I'm just like, yeah, it's easy for me to keep yeah. my mouth shut. Yeah. <laughs> just like on this show, I don't say anything because, you know, yeah. I want to stay alive and I want to not be sued. So, yeah. And not be killed off the show instantly. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, are there any particular companies in general that you'd or franchises that you'd like to try and get into? Well, I mean, I, I've always loved working on the Battlefield Hardlines because I'm a big first-person shooter fan. Mm -hmm. Um and I think that that whole world has become like shooters and, and RPGs. All right, RPGs, what am I saying? <laughs> I mean, you can shoot those. Yes, yes, yes. Um, just like, <laughs> I, I think like for me, Grand Theft Auto is probably one of the best, like just first person immersive games where you can just do whatever you want. And I think that's wonderful. Um, of course, um, there's a lot of, you know, great voice work that you can do uh, in like fantasy, you know, and fi Final Fantasy is one that I've always loved. And I think that that also is really have a strong emphasis on story. So that would be one that I would, you know, look to go to next because yeah. like, they have so much of an emphasis on the story that like in some games are just like, there's no talking. It's just like, you know, sound effects <laughs> and explosions, which is great. I love the playing those games, but it doesn't really give us a chance to do much voice work, you know, so. Have you gotten to play the newest Final Fantasy? I have not. Is it good? I loved it. Is it amazing? I absolutely loved it. Okay, okay, cool. Have you, uh... So you mentioned you play a lot of Xbox. Is there mm -hmm. a game in particular that is your favorite? Gears of War for me. I mean, like, I, I just... That game, especially because when, when, when the first Gears of War came out, it just really revolutionized how first-person shooters are played and how you kind of maneuver, maneuver through those worlds. I just... I, I don't think there's been a game that's come close to the, the cinematic feel. You know, like, when you're playing that game you feel like you're watching a movie and you're in a movie, you know? And that's what I love about it. It's just like you, you, you really feel like you're transported to these realms, you know? Nice. I actually just With got to play... Lancer, you know? Yes. Yeah. I just got to play uh, the most recent one. That was the first one I ever played. Yeah, four? I loved it. It's the best, right? Yes. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. I actually got to, to meet Liam and Eugene um, at E3 last year. Really? Before... I, and I felt bad. I'd never played any other games oh, before. Seriously? Oh, seriously? Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. I just bumped into them. Cool. <laughs> um... But has the gaming industry ever really influenced any of your your characters or? Ooh, um, not so much. But you know, I will say, like when we were doing Battlefield Hardline, they did ask me to do kind of a Matthew McConaughey inspired character for one of the bad guys. Because uh, I, I mean, I, we, the, the funny thing about video games that people don't realize is, you know, you're oftentimes there in these booths for you know hours at a time, and they're just spitballing. You're throwing out different ideas. And, and you and the director and the editors are kind of working together to create these characters on the fly. Because, you know, for that game in particular, I think I voiced 20 or so, 25 different characters over the span of a year and a half. So you think about that, it's like, you're creating, I mean, I did like Russians, I did, you know, uh, Eastern European, uh, you know, from, from Belgrade, I did, I did like um, uh, my, Florida, like Swamp Redneck guys, and I did like Texas Redneck guys, and I did you know, these Brooklyn types and like, you know, LA, like stoners, you know, like everybody that you could possibly imagine in the world just kind of like gets thrown into a hodgepodge of different ideas. And then we're just coming up with these voices on the spot, you know? Um, and so finding these voices, oftentimes they'd be like, Hey, try this guy with a bit of a twist or whatever. And that was where, um, I think, you know, you just realize how much work goes into these video games. Nice. Yeah. Um, has your ability to do really good impressions had gaming companies seek you out? Yes. I think that, like, the, the, the thing that most um, gaming companies look for is people who can do several voices. Because they want to get someone, not just who just does, like, one voice really, really well. They want to get the best, most bang for their buck. Mm -hmm. So you're going to go to someone who can do several voices at once. And I think, uh, luckily, I've... I've, I've 
over the years built up a, 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 you know, a lot of different voices. Um, and at the time, I was just doing it for fun, like at fun at parties or whatever. But um, I'm so grateful that like that nerdy, stupid, like you know, obsession of mine to like you know do impressions has finally like paid off. You know? That's awesome. What kind of got you into doing particular impressions? Like I've heard like your Christopher Walken mm. and I really just I, I pay attention to you know who my favorite actors are and like kind of just like I listen to what their voice is like and tonally and if it's close enough to mine, if it's like if it seems like one that I could do, if, like. If, People always ask if I can do women, and just my my natural voice is so mm-hmm. the, the tone is so low that I just it, it can't get there. You know, it's yeah. very difficult for my voice to go and, and make that much of a shift. But if it's a guy like even like Bobcat Goldthwait, who has a, a, a more you know higher you know he can go to those high like kind of pinched places, but um, for some reason like his natural speaking voice is more low. So mm-hmm. I can do that and put a little spin on there, but like going to a really high place, it's just almost impossible for me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is there? Do you have any tips for anybody who's wanting to try to get into trying to do impressions or voice acting yeah. or anything like that? I would just say study the study the movement because people just try to focus on the voice, and people need to understand that the voice is informed by the body, and it's basically like everybody, everybody's. Uh, you know, esophagus, their throat, their how they hold their body. That's going to inform the sound that comes out of their mouth, and it's just like an instrument. You know, like if you're playing a saxophone or you're, you're whatever, the way you manipulate the chords and the way you play with it, that's going to affect the way the sound comes out. So I would just say, like, don't just focus on the voice. Make sure you're focusing on how the person holds themselves and everything else, because that will help so much. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you very much.